Well, everyone, it is August week one. We have some new features to show off. Let's get started. I'm demoing this on behalf of my colleague Bender. We have a feature where you can embed data grids into iframes already. We've now extended that functionality to work for all plot types. So let's embed it, uh, this new tree map plot we have into an iframe. You can take uh, the URL and append the name and the object. So S and P market cap, which is from this object name uh, to the URL, and you get an embed page that is compatible with sticking into an iframe. So if we just have a simple iframe example here where we've embedded that same grid, and you can see that it also appropriately sizes depending on the size of the chart. That's just a quick little uh, demo to make it easier to share plots and charts. Next up is JJ. All right, um, so I've got a quick demo today. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and what I'll be showing today is, uh, so I'm an, a big NFL fan. I'm a big New York Giants fan. And I read uh, Fox Media's uh, Giants blog. It's called Big Blue View. And they have a uh, pretty popular blog page for every NFL team. And I check Big Blue View pretty often just to kind of see what's going on, especially with the NFL season ramping up here pretty quick. Uh, let me make the font a little bit bigger just to make sure everyone can read this. Um, so I decided that uh, I would just put something together real quick to uh, scrape the most recent uh, blog headlines for every team uh, on Vox Media. And it will write them all to a deep haven table. So we'll see this table on the bottom right start to populate. Um, with all the different teams and all the most and all the recent blog headlines. So if there's anything else that I'm interested in that I want to read, I can just go ahead and go check that out. So uh, I already know about the Giants headlines because I read these, but you know there is reason for me to check out Eagles, Cowboys, and Commanders because they're all the division. Um, and yeah, so this is a good way for me to kind of see what else is going on in the NFL that I don't really pay close attention to, like I do with my favorite team. And. That's all I've got for today. Okay, I think I'm up, up next. Uh, my name is Devin and I'm a developer at Deep Haven. Um, I'm gonna be showing off our uh, single container uh, image today. Let me go ahead and present my screen. I think everybody can see this, is that correct? Yep. Great, um, so I'm just gonna walk through a couple quick examples here. Um, I've got some zero, one, two, three I'm gonna do here. So um, as part of our 0 0.15.0 release, um, we've got single container images. Um, probably the way that you've interacted with Deephaven before is with a four container stack. Um, but now we've got these um, Jetty images uh, that contain a lot of stuff all packaged in one image. Um, so it's it's the same number, a 0 0.15.0, but then it's um, appended with dash Python or dash Groovy. And so what we can do is we can take this single command line uh, and we can go uh, ahead and run it. I've actually already done it right there, but I'll just do it again to show you. A single uh, command right there, we can go ahead and run it. And now we've got Deephaven started on port 10,000. And to show you, I will go ahead and bring it up. And hopefully this will reload. And there we go. We're in our server. Print, print line. Oops, print. Whoa. So there we go. Uh, the one thing that is missing from our uh, Jetty single container image is built-in support for WebDAV notebooks. So if you look over here, um, Notebook support actually isn't going to work here, um, but that's what I'm going to show you how to fix here really quickly. So let's go ahead and uh, stop this other command. And now let's jump over to what you might be um, familiar with as well as a Docker compose file. So we'll take the same idea and we'll just um, make it a Docker compose file real quick. Um, so this is basically the same thing. Um, we'll go ahead and spin up the Groovy image this time um, and then we'll specify our ports here. So what we can do is we can do docker compose f. I'm using file one right here just to show. 
So what we can do is we can bring that up and it's gonna be very similar. Um, we can go ahead and go to this port 10,000 and have it load hopefully shortly. Um, and, and what you could do before um, was you could, if you wanted to, you can start multiple servers up here. So let's say we wanna call, um, we wanna start another deep haven server. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to choose a different port right now. So um, let's go ahead and start up a different deep haven server. Let's do the Python this time on port 10,001. Go ahead and save that. You can go ahead and bring this file up or this compose file up again. It'll create the new service. And so now we've got our Groovy service right here. And if we go to port 10,001, we'll have our Python service right here. Um, again, we don't have notebook support right here. Um, but what I'm working on is expanding this. So let's take the same idea. Let's say we wanna run two services and we want them to share the same uh, notebook storage. Uh, what we can do is we can uh, go ahead and add a little bit more structure. So I've called this uh, deep haven foo and deep haven bar. These are two servers right here. And what we've added into the mix here is a, a single web dev server. And so that's gonna be our notebook storage. Uh, there's a couple routing rules that, that basically say, if the prefix, um, the path prefix starts with notebooks, then route that to this web dev. And that's how uh, the Docker or the Deep Haven web UI works. Um, and then on top of it, I've got a reverse proxy here that's called traffic. Um, I've been experimenting with this and I really like it um, because you can express your rules with um, Docker labels, which makes it really easy to route everything around. So you'll notice some differences um, on this. Uh, we don't have to specify the ports here. Um, we are specifying port 80 for traffic though. Um, and you'll see how routing works here really shortly. Let me go ahead and bring our original Docker compose down. And let's bring Docker to up. And again, this is the traffic routed version. Uh, so you'll see a couple more containers are being created. We've got a reverse proxy, we've got a web dev, we've got two deep haven servers here now. So now we're not accessing it through port 10,000 and 10,001. What we're gonna be accessing it through is a deep haven foo.localhost. So there we go, there's our foo service. And we have deep haven bar localhost um deep haven and there we go and you will notice that um we have notebook support so i've, I've preloaded this and you'll notice that our web dev notebooks are the same on both of these locations uh, in fact if we go ahead and add a file right here i'm um, just to show you real quick we will call this um, hello, we'll save it and we'll go print hello world. Go ahead and save that and we jump over to the, our other IDE and we go ahead and click on this bar and there we go. We can see hello.py uh, over here. Um, so two different services, both sharing the same underlying notebook storage. Um, and just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick demonstration showing um, um, some stuff you can execute. So we're on service foo here, which is groovy. So I'm just gonna execute this little timetable right here. Uh, what we've got is we've got a ticking table over here that just, just says hello from foo. If we go over to our other service, part two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that table from deep haven foo. Uh, so now we've done a worker to worker transformation. Um, and we've got that same table being transferred over barrage to here. Um, let's go ahead and say we wanna update it. So we're gonna take that table and we're just gonna um, add an extra column to it that says, nice to meet you from bar. Uh, and if we want to, we'll go back to our original foo service and we will um, do a re resolution uh, against that, <laughs> that updated table that the other service made from us. Um, so we've got kind of a full round trip here. So we've got an original table here, going to an external server being updated, and then coming back here, uh, and it's ticking the whole way. Um, so that is um, hopefully 
a quick tour of stuff that you can do here. Um, using a reverse proxy is really nice here because let's say we wanted to spin up a bunch more services. Let's say I wanted to uh, spin up a deep haven. Let's just call it um, one, deep haven two. Let's just say we want to spin up two more deep haven services. This is all you'd have to do is just specify them. Then you'd be able to go ahead and say, I want to bring those new services up. Bam, they're up. And what we can do here is we can go deep haven one dot localhost. So there we go. We've got a new service. And of course, you can go into two, deep haven two. So um, it's really nice that we've got a, a way to proxy and we can use these single container images. And oh, yeah, these will have access to the same uh, shared notebook storage as well. So uh, that is my demo. Very cool. That's it for this week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.